And for our next presentation, we are joined by FACE Holographic Imaging and CEO Peter Egelberg. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, yes, my name is Peter Egelberg, and uh, besides being the CEO of FACE Holographic Imaging, I'm also its founder. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about empowering medical research. And you may ask yourself, what does this mean? And uh, I will try to explain this today for you. First, I would like to talk about our product, which is called Holomonitor. And it is called Holomonitor uh, because it actually uses something called holographic microscopy. Holographic microscopy is a little bit different than traditional microscopy. <laughs> in that it collects the light uh, from the object and creates the image with computer algorithms. This gives uh, several advantages, especially in the area which we are active in, and that is non-invasive cell analysis. And why is this interesting? Uh, it is interesting because pharmaceuticals are developed by using either animal, uh, testing animals, or by using cell cultures. Uh, conventional methods that are used to analyze cells uh, actually uh, inv are invasive and may even uh, kill or destroy the cells. Our method is uh, completely non-invasive and allows research to researchers to study the cells without uh, harming or, or in any way uh, influencing the cells. Cells are cultured in what is called an incubator, and you see the incubator here. Uh, in this cell laboratory, Holomonto records time-lapse movies from within a cell incubator. What you see here on the, on the screen here is uh, our instrument, Holomonitor. Uh, within the incubator. And what you see on this motorized stage are three cell cultures, each in a Petri dish. What Holomonitor does is that it moves from cell culture to cell culture and records images. These images are then put together to create a time-lapse movie of the cells. And this here on the bottom, on the bottom right here is a typical time-lapse movie that Holomonitor records. And what you see are cells that are dividing and interacting at the same time as they are moving about within the cell culture vessel. And you can actually see when a cell is about to divide. It curls up and becomes more purple uh, before uh, it actually divides and split into two. And what you also can see, which is interesting, that when cells reach out, you can see these arms, they reach out to each other, then they actually start talking to each other. And that's a signal, in many cases, for the cells to start dividing. Now this type of information, especially cell, the cell division rate, is of course interested, interesting for uh, cancer researchers. A tumor is cell growth out of control, and they want to quantify uh, whether cells are, are increasingly dividing or decreasing. A drug, a cancer drug, should of course decrease the amount of cell division. As you also can probably appreciate is that the cells, or these time-lapse images, uh, create an enormous amount of data and our proprietary software extracts this data in a user-friendly way and presents it for the user. So data analysis is key for this product. And I'm going to talk about data analysis a little bit more later on in this presentation, but for a completely different purpose. Jointly, our over 200 customers have published over 200 uh, scientific uh, publications based on data collected uh, by Holland Monitor. Uh, our most notable customers are Bayer, 
the German company, Novo Nordisk, Harvard and, and Stanford University together with National Institutes of Health in, in the United States. Now, so how large is the market for this? It's actually surprisingly large. Um, we have estimated that uh, there are at least 100,000 el eligible customers or cell culture laboratories uh, worldwide. A holo monitor unit sells for uh, somewhere between 25,000 euros uh, up to 50,000 euros. Customers uh, are both within academia and, and the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, originally, we started mostly uh, selling towards academia, but now increasingly we are selling towards uh, pharmaceutical or biotech companies, especially in the United States. It's, uh, it's, it has been a surprise to us how many of these companies are, and it's, it's within a Many of these companies uh, work with stem cells and other types of uh, products associated with stem cells. Now, how do we address this market? That is what I would like to talk, to talk about uh, during my next slide. Now, I talked about data analysis. And <clears throat> Digital marketing is, has the ability to actually predict future sales with a pre precision that has not previously been possible with traditional marketing. In our business, traditional marketing means selling your, your equipment or your instrumentation through distributors. That's how it's been done in the past and, and all the way up to the pandemic. The traditional way of marketing products within our, our business is to do this uh, through distributors. And that has been the case all the way up to the pandemic. However, during the pandemic, uh, the, the business has gone into radical change. And this is because we as individuals have gotten used to uh, video communication in a completely different way than we were before the pandemic. So this has allowed us uh, to switch or shift completely to uh, online uh, sales and marketing. And with online sales and marketing, if you do it right, it is possible to actually predict future sales in a, with a precision that was not really possible previously with traditional marketing involving trade shows and, and uh, customer visits to a much larger extent that is actually necessary in the post-pandemic world. Now, before I go into that to more detail, I, I would like to, to talk about uh, our current sales and how they have developed over the past year or so. Uh, on the graph here, you see uh, a decline in our sales, and this was actually during the height of the pandemic. Uh, we were affected uh, by the pandemic, uh, as many other businesses. Uh, what happened in our case was simply that all cell laboratories closed and the customers stayed home. However, after uh, the pandemic and during the past four months, or four quarters, sorry, we have seen a very nice development in, in our sales. And this is thanks to our um, strategic shift to online sales and marketing. And the key to this is data analysis. In the two graphs you see here is a correlation between website activity and our actual sale. Now our, our vision and goal when it comes to sales and marketing is to establish a correlation between 
how many users are active on our website, and what we achieve in sales. As you can see, here, uh, over time, since we began uh, seriously uh, marketing through, uh, on our, on, through uh, digital means, we have had a steady increase in the actual number of active visitors on our website. Now, you can argue, because this is the cost here, that while well, you're spending more. Yes, that is true. But if you look here during the past few months, or I should say one, two, three, four, five months, we're actually paying less for more, for, uh, we're paying less per active user on our website. The cost is the same, but the number of active users or visitors has gone up. Now, the number of active visitors correlate with the number of customers' inquiries we are receiving. And this, in turn, correlates to our achieved sales, which, again, has improved very nicely uh, during the, the past four quarters. Now, and finally, I would also like to a little bit more briefly explain what we intend to use the proceeds for. Our, our world is divided up into preclinical and clinical applications. Our current product addresses the preclinical market, and we would like, of course, to develop that, but we also would like to expand into clinical applications. Thank you. Thank you, mm. Peter, for that very interesting presentation. Um, I just have a couple of follow-up questions mm. for you. Um, the first one leading on directly from your, from your end here. You mentioned that your aim is to diversify into clinical applications. Could you elaborate a bit on that area? Yes, certainly. Uh, our current product uh, is used within drug development. And it's the drug that is the treatment, not the cells. The cells are only used to test the drug. However, there is a, a, a new field which has evolved uh, during the past 20 years, which is showing great promise. Many of the uh, large pharmaceutical companies are now investing heavily in this area. And this area is called regenerative medicine. The basic principle behind re regenerative medicine is to extract cells from the patient, culture the cells in a petri dish, uh, like I showed previously in my presentation, and then transform these cells before they are actually transplanted back to the patient. For example, to cure heart disease, Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, whatever. But in all these cases, you need to have different, you need to transform the cells differently for different purposes. Now, there is an issue in this, that cell culturing is still a craft. It hasn't really changed. So as you see on the image here, uh, cells are cultured uh, manually. It's not an industrial process. And for these type of therapies to be cost effective, they're all used, but they're terribly expensive. So, for every, so, so that everybody of us can enjoy these therapies in the future, costs must come, must come down and the whole process of creating these therapies must be industrialized. And there is where we see our role. Our equipment is perfectly suited to, to assess the quality of the cells in the process, in the industrial process. Because it's label-free, or it doesn't require any reagents, and it's absolute no-no to, to add reagents to the cells because the cells are going to be transplanted back to the patient. So it needs to be without any additives whatsoever when you are transforming and processing these cells. So there is where we see our, our ability and our capacity or, or possibility to expand into cell uh, clinical applications. 
And then my final question would be to ask you what you say are your strongest cards in increasing the market shares. I've been speaking about data analysis. And our strength is really that we can apply the data analysis we provide to our customers and our expertise in that field, we can apply that to sales and marketing as well. It's, this, it's the same type of data analysis, just the data that is different. So we see that that is an enormous strength for us. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for coming here and telling us about your company. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.